Okay. In three, two, one. Welcome to The Peaceful Truth, the podcast where we talk about everything from women empowerment, feminism, and everything in between. You are joined by your host, Kenzie Meekbeck. Thank you all for tuning in for yet another week. Um, I just wanted to remind everyone that we have switched to Mondays officially and the podcast airs every other week still. So from every other Thursday to every other Monday. Today, I am talking about marriage and the patriarchy. I mean, not focusing on like a union between two people that's eternal. Um, I feel like that is just uh, a beautiful concept. I'm talking about the old concept of marriage and traditional marriage in the United States. To preface this idea, though, I have dreamt of the idea of marriage my whole life. Um, And I think that has a lot to do with culturally how I was ingrained. I was raised in the South where I feel like definitely a lot of the patriarchy is still alive. Um, I do feel like there are progressive people in the South, but um, at the same time, it does uphold and embrace a lot of those old ideas and ideals. And I do like the concept of formally promising each other in an eternal union. I think that concept alone by itself, no matter who is coupling up, um, is beautiful. And it's the concept of bringing two families together as one that's also beautiful and two people together as one as one family is a beautiful pledge um, in life. But again, in the traditional sense of marriage, not like civil union, in marriage, there's a lot of patriarchy still uh, with that idea that I struggle with. So today, my ideas about today's podcast were enhanced by Dr. Neil Burton in an article in Psychology Today. Uh, I wanted to read a quote, though, from the article where I feel like a lot of this socialization and culture begins. And again, this is why I've probably dreamt of marriage my whole life. And I relate a lot to this quote, um, just personally and how I felt culturally growing up. I don't agree with it. I'm just saying I relate to it because uh, this is what I felt like growing up, and I'm trying to challenge that now. It says, this ideology is manifest, among others, in the socialization of children, which emphasizes man as the breadwinner and decision maker, and women as the mother and the homemaker. Boys are encouraged to be brave and strong, while girls are expected to be passive and pretty. Through, among other fairy tales, dolls, activities as such as dressing up or baking, and above all, the examples and attitudes of role models, including historical figures. And I do relate to that. I felt like that's what I was told as a child, and I enjoyed as a child, just because that came to me, and it was also expected out of me, and I wasn't given another option, as well as I just like was like, oh, okay, this is what we do. Now, I have my own career goals, and I like want a lifetime a lifelong partner, but I don't know what that partnership will look like, whether it's traditional or not. And I just feel like I also have my own career goals and aspirations. But we did this thing back in middle school where we would send a letter to our 18 or 21 year old self. um, I forget how old, like a time capsule type thing where you would write a letter to yourself and then send it later. And in my letter, I wrote to myself that I just wanted to be a mother and a wife. And I think that's because I thought that's what I had to be. But luckily, for some reason, my ideas changed and I allowed myself to have a career and a life. And I pursued that and put that first in my young 20s, which I think was good for me. I think marriage and being a wife and being a mother and that being a lot of your identity is a wonderful thing. Um, but I think it should be a choice rather than just ingrained. I think it should be a conscious decision of you knowing what you want. And, uh, I don't think I did because I differed from that. And I thought that is what I wanted just because that's what I was told. So it ended up not being true for me. Um, again, the damage of the patriarchy. So I wanted to walk through also a marriage in the traditional sense and how it begins And just kind of talking about the parts of the patriarchy that are really ingrained in the beginning of a marriage and the celebration of a wedding that I think are kind of antiquated and we need to 
just reflect on them and challenge them and be critical of them. I just feel like just upholding traditions to uphold traditions is kind of just blind, leading the blind. Um, but yeah, I think it's good to just think about things. So the proposal. Again, it's the men giving a woman a symbol of marriage to say that they are taken by a man. So you get the man gets down on one knee famously asks you professes his love asks him to marry you he gives you a ring with a large diamond in it and this is the man saying like that symbol of marriage this ring is saying that you were taken by a man but again in typical american society men don't also wear a symbol that says that they are taken by another person it's and again it's just like You are owned and taken by someone, but the man doesn't have to do the same. Like he doesn't expect to be celebrated in that way. Like you're someone's possession, but he isn't yours too. Um, So it's just not equal in that sense, in my opinion. I also feel like the proposal is less of a conversation and more of an elaborate ritual, which can be great if you had that conversation behind it, but like... The ritual is more focused on it than like the conversation itself, I feel like, of what the marriage will be like. Or at least just like that is what society shows you as the beauty of it. So that's like the main thing you publicly see. I mean, there might be more behind that, but you know what I mean. And I feel like both people should wear a ring if it's an equal decision. Or the woman should also feel more empowered and less ashamed to be the one proposing and asking someone to spend the rest of their life with them. And that the man shouldn't feel less than or emasculated by that. It sh- it should be like an equal partnership where someone is honored that someone else like thought so much of you that they want to make you your their eternal partner. I just think that concept in itself is beautiful and maybe we should both wear a ring. Now I want to talk about the concept of the father and his involvement in the marriage. First of all, in the South... Oftentimes men get insulted or fathers get insulted if your boyfriend doesn't ask for their permission to marry you and it's asking for his blessing and permission to propose and it that in itself is very patriarchal and then when you go to the wedding the father walks you down the aisle or the woman because I say you because I'm living that experience and gives the daughter away like it's his piece of property to give away again like this whole these two interactions within a proposal in the marriage uh, or the wedding it just feels like a business decision and a deal between two men about the life of a woman like it's property like it's a transfer over like the only permission you need sir is mine and my consent in this marriage because I'm my own person in my humble opinion Okay, the wedding itself. So the bride is always in a white large dress. And the dress itself in the old days used to symbolize purity and virginity. And even though like people don't recognize that as much as its symbol today, that tradition is still carried on. And it's still what a wedding is largely associated with. You think of like the ring, the white dress, Um, the tux and like that white dress is one of the main things you think of when you think of a wedding or at least I do and what it used to symbolize is kind of archaic but again it's a hard thing to deal with because culturally it's deeply ingrained in me and I still dream of the white dress and that would be the one of the more important things to me but now I'm thinking more critically about it and who knows if my ideas will change I just think it's important to challenge old ideas and not just blindly go forward with it without thinking about it. Another part of the wedding that is kind of antiquated, I'm sure I'm missing so many elements that are, but the fact that you say in like the vows, traditionally, you may now kiss the bride. And another man is giving another man permission to now kiss this woman. It rids the woman of her consent and her own body. It's someone else giving permission to kiss someone else and it's of the church And it's not like both of you should kiss to seal this union together if you so choose. It's like this man is now allowed to kiss this woman, but she doesn't give consent and it's someone else giving that consent. Again, it's like she's property and I don't like it. 
Okay. And finally, the last name. And like the concept that a straight female should take the man's last name and then the children will take his last name and that's how it's passed on. This idea is one that I struggle with. I do like the idea of a family unit sharing a last name regardless of genders within a union and then that can help track their family history and they become one with that name. I I like that idea. I don't like that it enhances the patriarchy though in the traditional sense. The last name is the man's and that's the only way the last name is carried on or the family history dies and that's why in some societies people want sons over daughters so their last name is carried on and their history continues because if the daughter will just go on and take someone else's name and it's that family's history that she belongs to, no longer her own. And the woman has to give part of her identity in a marriage, but the man doesn't. It's it's like she's becoming a part of his and losing her identity. And the kids also take his last name, even the mom. And even if the mom doesn't take that last name, she won't have her children's last name. And that sucks because she can't share in her last name without giving up her identity. And I don't know, like, what I would do about this situation. I think it's really complex. But, like, what if the couple decides on a new last name together and they decide to take it on in their union and become one by choosing a new one together and both taking it and then the children taking it? Either way, the whole concept is a bummer and complicated and hard to track. And it's just so deeply ingrained. And I wish there was a better idea about names and just the overall association with them and what it entails. So I appreciate everyone listening to my rant about uh, the wedding and the patriarchy and the marriage and the patriarchy. Um, I'm trying to think of what I'm looking forward to this week. I'm looking forward to buying new plants for my house. I've always wanted like a fig tree in my house and I know that's so lame but I really want a fig tree to put in my house and I think I'm finally gonna buy one Um, I want you guys to think about what you're looking forward to this week even if it's little or big whatever you're looking forward to and I appreciate everyone tuning in I'll see you next Monday bye